quick as I write my first paragraph of my paper. I'm also going to do a show you an example of how you would cite or how you would do an in-text citation uh, for a piece of evidence. So here's where my paper is at. You watch me write this introduction. It's pretty okay, but actually I'm going to change my thesis right now because I think I've got plenty of stuff to write on. If I just use these first two claims, they're pretty hefty, significant claims that he redefined intellectual economy creating music that translated the color barrier and uh, well, actually, I could keep it that way, grammatically, acting with great personal dignity in his relationship with people of all races. That is good enough. Plus, this is weirdly grammatical. I'd have to turn it into two sentences um, if I want to. It doesn't read very well. So if I keep it this way, I think it works as a thesis. Intellectual equality, yes. So I'm going to change it in my actual paper down here, and I'm good to go. You can see that I've, uh, I called this an intro when I actually do, you know, this when it becomes my paper, I'm still drafting right now, but this will be gone, and uh, you'll see that when you see my final version. But these can be pretty helpful. This is a, uh, called a, a heading. It's just something to let my reader know what direction I'm going in, and I might leave that in there in the final version. But... Uh, here I go. I'm looking. I've got this piece of evidence here that's, that's good evidence from a credible source. There existed little recognition that African Americans or whites could enjoy any music or entertainment unless it originated in or culturally drew from their own race. And again, this was the author Cohen talking about what it was like before, so he's, before Ellington. So he's talking about America of the early, early 1920s. So I'm going to set the reader up to get that piece of information and be convinced that I know what I'm talking about when I say in my thesis that he uh, tr wrote music that transcended the color barrier. So first, I'm going to have to establish that there was a barrier between blacks and whites in uh, the early 1920s before Ellington became famous, and that's probably a pretty easy thing to uh, prove, but I'm going to I'm going to do that. Uh, let's see. So uh, I'm going to say. Ellington was born into a world that uh, didn't, did not, that that did not recognize intellectual equality between blacks and whites. More specifically, more specifically, the dominant white culture did not generally perceive the mm, intellectual eh, the woman in our culture saw blacks as inferior. I'll, I'll say something a lot simpler. Saw African Americans. And you see, I, I, I go back and forth between saying African American and uh, saying blacks and whites. African Americans, then white culture, saw them as in, as their cultural in. Um, these perceptions perceptions were rooted in probably in a lot of different things, but I want to say something about slavery here. These perceptions, um, this should come as no surprise. This should come come as no surprise. And then I'm going to use a semicolon here because i got two sentences that are both going to be full sentences, but they're kind of equal. This should come as no surprise. Slavery was not outlawed in the United States. States until 
what was it, 1865? I'm going to say 1865 for now. But I'm going to put a little question mark there because I'm going to check my source to make sure that I'm correct. This should come as no surprise slavery was not outlawed in the United States until 1865, even in the 19... Even in the early 1920s, um, it was generally, generally believed that the two cultures could not, two cultures could not eh, enter mix, I'll say that for now, intermix, mm, and let's see if this fits to get my quote in here, yeah, that does support that quote, that looks pretty good, so I'm just going to put this in here for now, and uh, if you remember our pair writing from earlier, you see what's going on here, that we have a P, this is my point, right, which is also Related to my claim, my first, this is my first significant claim when I call this part one, this is a claim. But here's my point right now is that, is that the world he was born into did not see equality between blacks and whites uh, intellectually or artistically. So there's my point. Here, I'm introducing my evidence. This is a little bit more point here. I'm introducing my evidence. Here is my evidence. And now I'm going to go into an analysis of that evidence. Now notice once again. Cannot stress it enough. You see how this is punctuated. Even in the early 1920s, it was generally believed that the two cultures could not intermix. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm kind of saying my idea, then I'm using a colon here because this could be a complete sentence. Even in the early 1920s, it was generally believed that the two cultures couldn't mix. I could put a period there. Instead, I'm using a colon and I'm going to introduce a quote from an expert that. You see that fits with my with my understanding. There existed little recognition that African Americans or whites could enjoy any music or entertainment entertainment unless it originated in or culturally due for their from their own race. In this way, many Americans saw a distinct culture uh, distinct Mm. distinct line between cultures. We can call this line the color barrier. This is the world that Duke Ellington was born into and the world that he would transform through his uh, through his musical genius. Okay? And I'm going to leave it at that. So you see that this paragraph is a little bit light on my analysis and and I could probably add a sentence or two, but for the but for the purpose that I have right now, I've established that there was something called a color barrier. Now it'll be up for my other evidence, and here's another piece that I might put in another paragraph to establish the, to to prove that he broke through that color barrier. And this evidence would do that. Notice it's from a different source. As for contemporary Americans, Ellington is the quintessential, which means most important or most essential, American composer. Okay, so if we're saying he's the most, notice, notice how this uh, scholar said he was the most important American post composer. Not African American composer, not black American composer, but American composer. Alright, so by the time this was written, and I, and I might have to talk about the date when this was written, which this was written, I think, in the you know, in the last 10 years, this particular piece right here, to talk about the transformation that's happened since the 1920s. But for now, I'll leave it at this. Notice that my current word count is up to, let's just see what I'm up to, because I found this, 
for my tools, my word count. I'm up to 383 words, and I have not, and I've just started. So that's kind of how it works, and this is actually all I'm going to do for my example for you. You'll be on your own for the rest. Good luck.